Global audiences have been a big focus for gaming companies over the past few years because the more people you can sell your game to, the potentially higher sales you'll see. And now Guilty Gear's creator has confirmed the developer Arxis is giving more focus to global tournaments, which of course raises massive red flags for us all. I have a few different things that I want to show off, but before we get into the topic, if you enjoy the content that I create, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Follow me on social media like Twitter or mine so that you can see when my content is posted. And of course, if you do really enjoy the videos and the live streams that I create, please consider becoming a Dark Titan via Patreon or a supporter via YouTube membership. So starting off with this bounding into comics article, it says Guilty Gear creator confirms developer Arxis giving more focus to global tournaments, says video games should not be in violation of global standards of compliance. So yes, it seems like Arxis has fallen quite a bit, and whenever we hear the word global, um, I you know, it raises these red flags because we have seen so many companies censor their games, change the directions of their titles um, because of, you know, global standards and trying to reach those global audiences. And while, yes, at the end of the day, they are a company that needs to make money, by changing their games to comply with these global standards, it means that they are losing audience um, individuals that they already have. It says in yet further confirmation that the once esteemed developer has abandoned their own creative integrity in favor of making a quick buck. The Arxis CEO and CCO have confirmed that the future of the fighting game studio will center on appealing to global standards. And this is especially worrying because we are talking about fighting games here. That means so many bad things are going to happen to their upcoming titles and is so sad. We saw Mortal Kombat do this a little bit. Obviously, Mortal Kombat is very gory, very violent, but in Mortal Kombat 11, we of course saw them tone down some of the female character outfits. Uh, a lot of people thought that that was, you know, to comply with global standards, um, but we actually also recently saw another fighting game company do this. I've talked about it several times on the channel, but the current Skullgirls developers are censoring their popular fighting game series in the spirit of better reflecting their values and their broad vision moving forward, but we found out that, of course, they are going to Evo, so it seems you know, very fitting that they would tone down the sexualization, some of the, what they are calling offensive jokes in the game, in order to comply with Evo standards. Um, so a lot of fighting games, unfortunately, are kind of falling from their pedestals right now. It says that they laid bare their plans for Arxis during an interview given to Forbes' Ollie Barter in honor of the Dragon Ball Fighter Z developer's 35th anniversary. Asked by him for their thoughts on the evolution of the Guilty Gear series as a whole, they bluntly admitted, I'm so sorry for all the navel-gazing answers, but I don't consider this series to have evolved. Of course, over time, technology, accessibility, game size, etc. has improved. However, the high highest priority concept for Guilty Gear has been ensnare your attention at first sight, and the more you engage, the more you discover. The changes to expression in plays are the result of each era's attempt at protecting those concepts. However, as a creator, I have had several changes to the way I think about games. These are definitely not sounding like very confident answers. It really sounds like they are I'm honestly a little bit disappointed with their games. It says in the first game, capturing the feel of an action game rather than a fighting game was important to me. When the series arrived to the arcades for the very first time, my point of importance was to make an immaculate tool of a fighting game, and after hearing stories of players who have made both friendly and romantic connections through this game and learning about the overseas user community, I have come to recognize that games are really a hymn to humanity. Uh, to this end, both executives then expressed extreme gratitude towards the series fans, particularly hiding how 
highlighting how their support is one of, if not the major reason for its continued existence, which of course that is the truth. If you do not have fans, you cannot continue to make products because you don't have people who are going to buy them. Uh, you know, Guilty Gear has a lot of fans and Arxis in general has a lot of dedicated players who would purchase anything they release at this point. And it is good that they are kind of praising the, uh, uh you know, as they're saying, the efforts of the fans, which is always nice to hear. But at the same time, it really doesn't sound like they have a lot of confidence in their product. And of course, now they're, you know, talking about global audiences saying in Japan, there's a strong game arcade culture and the Guilty Gear community has grown and developed within this culture. Now there are global tournaments held by the fighting game community and the Arc World Tour exists within that community. I unfortunately do not think that this is going to work out for them. Of course, when we are talking about, you know, global standards, fighting tournaments, we are thinking about, unfortunately, toned down content. And that is not what people want to see from this game and from any of their games in general. However, despite this praise of the series' established fan base, Ishiwatari would undercut his own respect for them by announcing the one thing no veteran fan of any IP wants to hear, declaring, I don't believe the definition of esports is fully shared by people, countries, or organizations, but if there is to be a future where video games are treated on the same level as physical sports, then at the very least they should not be in violation of standards of global compliance, violent expression is not uncommon, especially in competitive action games, fighting games included. From the portrayal of characters to the treatments of real countries to world settings to even a single line of dialogue, expressions that hurt anyone should not be the goal. That is so extremely worrying. Saying things like, they would basically, at the end of the day, be willing to change their portrayal of characters and world settings, lines of dialogue, expressions, in order to, as it says, uh, you know, not be in violation of global standards of compliance. And of course, I'm sure that this is going to worry a lot of people going forward for their next game releases. We don't know what it will be or when it will be, but there's definitely a lot to take in here. Um, you know, I am all for there being global tournaments and ways for people to, you know, become esports pros with specific games, fighting games included, of course. But to hear that the developers would be willing to do this in order to have a global kind of audience is, you know, just disappointing to me. And I, I'm sure a lot of you. Over the past few years, I have had to talk a lot about the fighting game scene and a lot of developers making very poor decisions. And while I don't want to completely say Arxis has fallen uh, to the depths of the abyss, I also think that this is something we really need to be careful of because it does sound to me like they would be willing to censor upcoming content in order to fit into these guidelines. I will be keeping my eye on this and of course, you know, I'll be covering the fighting uh, game scene more in general in the future. Uh, I've also been covering the Skullgirl situation quite a bit, but there is definitely a lot of red flags raised for me and I'm sure a lot of you at this point. But that's all that I really had to discuss in this video. Let everyone know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this and of course found it important and informative, please make sure to give it a like, share it, and subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you didn't, make sure to give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way, but I will talk to you all again in the next video really soon.